Hi, my name is Aran Ashkenazi and I'm the VP of Services at Sentinel One. Today, in this short demo, I will be going through how Sentinel One can successfully detect and block attacks which are originating from a lateral movement. Lateral movement has been utilized recently in numerous attacks, giving a worm like behavior to some of the most lethal ransomware and APTs that we've seen out there. Some examples are WannaCry and NotPetya. In this particular demonstration, I will demo NotPetya and invoke a run that will eventually try to infect additional systems in my network. What we're seeing in front of us is the Sentinel-1 console. I'm using a browser to connect to our console. Our management server is basically local in this particular case and is representing an on-premise type of deployment. Sentinel-1 supports both on-premise and cloud deployments for its management. I also have two other systems. I got a Windows 7 running our endpoint solution, Sentinel-1 EPP, and the same exact system which doesn't run our solution and is therefore unprotected. I will use this machine to invoke my particular threat. Finally, in our console, we have set up our system to be on protect, both against threat as well as suspicious events. So let's start with the demo. We're going to invoke this particular attack manually. So I'm going to go into my desktop folder and basically run the attack by invoking uh, the NotePetya DLL and providing the proper parameters to allow it to work. Now, just before I press enter, I'd like to be able to see the attack even in tools outside of Sentinel-1. So I'm going to run process monitor just to show you how the attempt has been done via the network. So let's just invoke this. We're running it on one machine. As we run it, it basically infects this particular machine and as I move to the other machine, it will basically try via the network to infect additional machines connected to that same network. It utilizes PSExe in order to make that infection happen. We've seen the detection now on the Sentinel-1 UI. And if we look into the actual process monitor, we will be able to see the attempts in this particular case, two separate attempts, that are utilizing PSXA service, running run DLL, trying to run some additional probably uh, aspects beneath it. In this particular case, it tries to touch window gone, command exe, even another temp file. So definitely there was an actual attempt here to infect the system. Let's move quickly to our console and see basically what happened. So, you know, these two attempts are basically recorded they have been detected and blocked. This is why you have the little X and the little square that basically says that the attempt was actually protected. It was killed and quarantined. If we go into any of those particular threats, we'll be able to see additional information on the nature of the attack. So lateral movement attempt that was killed and quarantined. We have information about the machine and the identified threat. On the right, we have information about the actual engine that blocked this particular attack. It says that it's a fileless detection, so no static information, but we've seen that, that that was the dynamic behavioral tracking, our dynamic AI engine. It's a machine learning engine on the dynamic side that basically blocked this particular fileless attack. Additional information is available as we scroll down, and we could see high level categories of the actual attack events, file operations, hiding and stealthiness, system manipulation, all in total about eight events that were recorded in this particular attack. And then on the attack storyline, we have the full blown story of the attack. It's basically a visual forensic that shows us how the lateral movement attempt basically invoked the PS exe. We can see the process operations here. How lateral movement is being invoked by PS exe and how PS exe is then invoking run DLL in order to run not Petya with particular set of arguments, which then in turns, you know, continues to uh, infect the system, run additional, um, you know, uh, events, 
um, in order to um, make damage to the system. Now, this particular attack was blocked, therefore you don't see additional information, but should you run this same experiment in detect mode, you would actually see the full detection um, information in addition to what we have seen so far with the blocked attempt. So all of that information is also available in the raw data report, and we can basically review it all um, as well. Uh, just to go quickly back to our systems, if I would go and reboot the system, which is normally how NotPetya eventually shows an infection, it will basically damage the master boot record of that particular machine and potentially hold you hostage for that information. Um, when we uh, reboot the systems, and I would reboot both of them in this particular point, you would see that the system on my left, the unprotected system, obviously got infected. Uh, any other system that wouldn't have Sentinel-1 installed on top of it uh, would be um, infected and that infection basically shows as the system boots and uh, the MBR is trashed and what we see is that you know it potentially tries to repair our uh, drive which of course it, it doesn't really. So on the, on the system on the right which runs Sentinel-1 uh, as it boots it will basically boot directly into my Windows logon And here we are, no damage whatsoever. Thank you for listening and watching this demo. I hope you had a good time. Enjoy your day.